Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. Today I want to do a classical mechanics problem and we're going to be looking at Lagrangians, how to identify position, velocity, uh, potential, kinetic energies from the system. Um, the system here, we have a pendulum that is attached to a glider accelerating in the Y direction, okay? And we're gonna identify this side here and this side here to help us with our position. So opposite over hypotenuse, we have B sine theta for here, that is in the X direction up to the pendulum. And in the Y direction, we're gonna have B cosine theta that is our initial height in the Y, okay? So just a couple things to identify before starting the problem. Okay, so now let's look at position, okay? So the position of the ball at the end of the pendulum, right? So this glider goes up and the pendulum is allowed to swing side to side. And so the position initially in the X is gonna be B sine theta. And in the Y, we're gonna need our kinematic equations. So using the change in Y equal to V initial in the Y direction times time minus one half uh, G T squared, okay? We're gonna use um, a general uh, formula for our kinematics because we don't know the acceleration in the Y and so we don't know that it's gravity which is 9.8 and so we're gonna write here the change in Y is gonna be equal to velocity initial in the Y minus one-half acceleration in the Y T squared okay and we don't start off with any velocity in the Y initially so it's at rest initially and the change in y is final minus initial. And so we're gonna write here y is equal to negative one half a y t squared. Uh, so this is final minus initial. And so we put the initial on this side and it's gonna be plus y initial, okay? So we're gonna need this to identify our y position. And we know that y initial is gonna be B cosine. So our Y position is gonna be negative one half A in the Y direction T squared plus B cosine theta, okay? This is gonna be our position, okay? And then now we're gonna need velocity. Okay, so our velocities are gonna be x dot. Okay, the only thing that's gonna be changing as this glider goes up and the pendulum swings side to side is gonna be our angle because since it swings, it's gonna be a smaller angle and a larger angle and the size of the actual pendulum doesn't change. And so B is constant. So we keep B, but we do take the derivative of sine theta because the angle is changing and so we're gonna get cosine theta theta dot which represents us taking a time derivative of the theta okay and y dot is gonna be we're gonna take the derivative of the acceleration in the y um, t squared term the only thing we're taking the derivative of is time. And so, since we have a t here, we're gonna bring that down and we're gonna get negative two over two is gonna be one. The a y stays and we keep one of the t's. And here, we're gonna take the derivative again of cosine theta because theta is a function of time. And so the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we're gonna write negative b sine theta, 
theta dot, okay? And that's gonna be our velocities, okay? And so just for notation, we have here x dot is the same thing as saying velocity, which is the same thing as saying dx over dt. So you see how we take a time derivative, and so everything that has time in it is also something that we take the derivative of, just like theta. So theta is written like this, which has a function of time in it. And so that's why we take the derivative of it. And so saying theta dot really means the derivative of theta over t, okay? So that's just for some notation before we continue. All right, now that we have the position and velocity, now we can do um, kinetic energy. So our kinetic energy, all right, will be T is equal to one half M V squared, right? Which can also be written as T is equal to one half M X dot squared plus Y dot squared, okay? So now we're gonna be using this and we have X dot and we have Y dot and so let's put those values inside of our kinetic energy term. And so we're gonna get T is equal to one half M. We got X dot squared. So let's write B cosine theta, theta dot. I'm gonna stop writing parentheses, but just know that this theta is inside of the cosine and this theta dot is outside. Okay, and so that all is squared plus y dot squared, so plus, and so we have these two terms, which is our y dot term, squared, so we have negative a y t minus b sine theta, theta dot. Okay, that's squared, and close it off. Okay, so let's, let's simplify this term, and since this is only one term, it's already simplified for us. So we have T is equal to one half M. We got B squared, cosine squared theta, theta dot squared, all right? And now we need to foil this term here. And so we're gonna get A, Y, T, both of these terms squared, okay? Since this is a minus and a minus, Right? When we combine them together, we're gonna to get a positive. So we're gonna have positive two uh, A Y T B theta dot sine theta for our middle term. And the last term is gonna be positive B squared theta dot squared sine squared theta, okay? So let's make sure we got everything. We got A2, T, B, theta dot. Okay, looks good. And on this side we have sine. Okay. So now let's combine some terms. Okay, we got cosine squared theta and sine squared theta, and they have the same values in the front. So let's combine them. So we're gonna write B squared theta dot squared and cosine squared theta plus this term here, sine squared theta. So you see if I distribute this back in, I get this term. If I distribute this into this one, I get this term. Okay, so I just combine them. And then I'm just gonna rewrite these again. Okay, you're just gonna bring them down. Can't really simplify them, so I'm gonna rewrite them. Okay, sine theta. And this is a this is a theta here, not a name. Okay, and that's it. So this could be one. And let's see. So this is this is just one. And so finally, our kinetic energy term 
is going to be b squared theta dot squared, okay, plus uh, 2ay tb theta dot sine theta, which is that one, plus ay squared t squared, okay? This is our kinetic energy term. Okay. Now, let's find our potential energy. And so our potential energy, all right, is gonna be U, which is equal to MGH, which is the height, right? We can also write U is MGY. And we know that our height is shown here by the position of y, okay? Because it's accelerating upward, but we're starting off at this um, initial height here. So it's a combination of both. So we're gonna write here, our potential energy is gonna be equal to mg, which is gravity. And in our y term, we're gonna have minus one half acceleration in the y direction and again we keep it as acceleration in the y because we don't know if it's gravity which is 9.8 this might be accelerating faster or slower you know this it's a it's not shown or given if this acceleration is the same as gravity so we're going to leave it with that notation okay and then the rest of it is b cosine theta okay so that's our y all right and this is our potential energy term so let's just um let's just distribute it so we can make it easier for us we're gonna have negative m g a in the y t squared all over two plus m g b cosine theta Okay, so that's our potential energy term. All right, and now we're gonna write our Lagrangian. So our Lagrangian, all right, is a combination of kinetic energy minus our potential energy. So if we take what we have here for our kinetic, we have one half m b squared theta dot squared plus 2 a t b theta dot sine theta plus a y squared t squared and we're going to have minus these two terms so this since this is a minus the first term is going to be plus uh, oh, and don't forget we have a parenthesis. So this entire term is kinetic energy, right? And that includes the one half m, and then minus u by itself. So minus this. So again, this is minus. So the first term is actually going to be a positive m g a t squared all over two, and remember it's minus u and so the second term is going to be minus mgb cosine theta okay so we distributed this negative into these two terms so the first term was positive and the second term here was negative okay this is all of our u term this is our u and this entire thing here is our kinetic okay so that's our lagrangian Let's try to box that up. Okay. All right, now let's do the equations of motion. And so what we need to look at is the motion of theta because that's what we're interested in. And so our Lagrangian um, represents our kinetic and potential energy in terms of our theta which is a function of time. So we have here the Euler-Lagrange 
equation of motion is going to be d dt, so the derivative with respect to time of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian over the partial derivative of theta dot, right, what we're interested in, minus partial derivative of the Lagrangian over the partial of theta by itself, that's equal to zero. Okay, so this right here is our equation of motion, our Euler-Lagrange equation of motion. Lagrange, okay, equation of motion, or Euler-Lagrange equation of motion, however you like to pronounce that. Okay, so let's do this in parts. So let's work with this first. All right, we have the partial of L, partial of theta, okay? And so now let's look at our Lagrangian and see what has theta in it, and we have to take the derivative of it. And so this first term has a theta dot, so no. This second term does have a theta, so let's take a derivative of that. And remember that this one half m distributes into all three terms. So once this half distributes into here, the two goes away and we're left with the m. And so let's write all the constants in the front or the values in the front. We have m from here. Here we have a, we have t, b, theta dot, and we have sine theta, okay? Um, I rewrote it just so that way we can take the partial derivative of it, okay? And we can see that the two cancels out with the two. Okay, so this is really what we have. Now let's take the partial of L over the partial of theta, which is just the derivative of this one. And so that's gonna equal m a t b theta dot cosine of theta, okay? And we don't put a theta dot behind it because all we're doing is taking the partial of theta, okay? So we're not taking the derivative with respect to time, which is different. Okay, we're just doing the partial of theta. And so that's what we get. And now let's work with the inside here, which is gonna be the partial of L with respect to theta dot. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. We have one more term that has a theta in it, which is gonna be attached to this here. Okay, so sorry about that. We have this term that has a theta in it, and this term here that has a theta in it, okay? So let's take the derivative of this with respect to theta, and we're gonna have derivative of cosine is gonna be negative sine. So this negative is gonna be a positive, and the constants in the front remain, and we have this, okay? So sorry about that. All of this is combined into one. So all of this is a result of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta, okay? That's this term here and that term there. Okay, now let's work with this term, which is the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. Okay, so this first term here has a theta dot. So let's take the partial of that. If we bring down the two, it cancels with the one half and we're left with m b squared theta dot, okay? And again, we don't have a time derivative, so we don't um, chain rule any theta dots or anything extra. It's just one derivative of it and that's it. Okay, this term here has a theta dot. So let's take the derivative of this term also. So if the one half m is, is foiled into here, we just le we left with the m, so we're gonna have plus m. We have a t b. If we take the derivative of theta dot, it goes away. 
sine theta, okay? And then none of these terms have theta dot, and so we're done with this one here, okay? And again, if you're confused about why we just dropped the theta dot, uh, maybe you can consider this example. If we have here uh, 2a, b, um, x, let's say, uh, sine theta, as an example, and we needed to do the partial of L, let's say this is represents our Lagrangian, with respect to x, right? It's like taking the derivative of x, and so all we'll be left with is this right here. So maybe if you don't understand that, if you take the derivative of just this term here, you drop the x and you're left with only the 2. So the same way that we have all of these values, right, and all we need to do is take the derivative of theta dot, it disappears, just like you would disappear a 2x, taking the derivative of it will give you a 2, okay? So that was just an example. Yeah, so don't, you know, that was just an example. Now we have that, we have this. Now we need one more thing. Now we need to take the time derivative of this value. So we have the time derivative of the partial of L with respect to theta dot, okay? Okay, here is where it can get a little confusing. Okay, so for this first term here, um, we have theta dot, and this is the only thing that has time in it. So we're gonna get m b squared theta double dot, okay? That's, uh, that's how we show that we take the time derivative of theta dot, okay? So I'm gonna show over here, again, an example. And so if we have theta dot, that is the same thing as saying d theta dt, okay? And theta double dot, okay, is the same thing as saying the derivative of theta dot with respect to time, okay? Which is also the second derivative, right? Second derivative of theta over theta uh, d, d t squared. All right, so all these two here are the same thing, and that's what this represents. And so the tricky part is the second term, where we have this value that has a t, and the theta has a t. So we need to do a product rule, okay? And I'm gonna write here our rule for product rule. Right, f prime g plus f g prime, where we're gonna have t as our f, and we're gonna have sine theta as our g, okay? And so I'm gonna pull out all the constants to the front, where m, a, and b, and I'm just gonna leave t and sine theta in the inside. Okay, so we still need to do the product rule of these two, all right? And so let's do that right here. We're gonna have the derivative of t is just one. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put the answer to this part in this parenthesis here. So the derivative of t is just one, and so we're left with sine theta plus, right? The first term comes along, and the derivative of sine theta is gonna be cosine theta, theta dot, okay? So in this case, we do the time derivative, right? Because that's what we need to take here. So that introduces the theta dot. Okay, so let me, let me rewrite this, this last term here Okay, part of 
partial of the Lagrangian, partial of theta dot. That's gonna be equal to this first term, theta double dot, plus we have these constants, which are outside of these parentheses, so they distribute into both of these terms. So we have this, M A B sine theta. We also have plus M A B, the second term, which T theta dot cosine theta. Okay, so this is finally what we have for this last part of the Euler Lagrange equations of motion. Okay? So now, let's put it all together. Okay, so we have here this term, which is all of this, okay, minus the, this top term here. Okay, so it might be a little bit long, but I'm gonna try to space it in here. And so let me box out this area make sure that we separate it so we're gonna be working in here okay so we have this first term which is this we have here m b squared theta double dot plus m a b sine theta plus m a b t theta dot cosine theta okay minus this term here. So we have minus M A T B theta dot cosine theta and the minus distributes into the second term and we have minus M G B sine theta and all of this equals zero. Okay? So this is our equation of motion and we need to solve for theta double dot which is the acceleration okay this is the uh, angular acceleration so let's see we can drop all the M's right they all cancel out all right and let's see what else we can combine or lose um, here we see that we have a b t theta dot cosine positive and a minus a t b theta dot cosine perfect so we can drop these two terms and we have left let's see let's write it here okay so now we have left b squared theta double dot from here from this term here we have a b sine theta um, these are these two are gone from this one here we have minus g b sine theta and everything is equal to zero perfect so now we have to single out theta double dot okay so let's uh, divide by b squared so everything here divided by b squared b squared and that would be zero Okay, so what are we going to have left? We're going to have theta dot by itself. Here, we're going to be left with a B on the bottom. So plus A over B sine theta. And here, we're going to be left with a B on the bottom as well. So we have minus G over B sine theta equals zero. Okay, so now let's combine Let's combine the values that we have in front of the sign. So we have theta double dot, okay, uh, plus, let's see, if we take out the sign, right, we have A minus G, and this is A in the Y, so over B, and we took out a sine theta and everything there is equal to zero okay so now let's see did we combine everything 
correctly. Okay, so this is our expression for the Euler-Lagrange equation of motion. And if we assume, so from here, let's work over here. If we assume small angle approximation, then sine theta would approximately be theta. And our new equation as a result of that would be theta double dot plus we have a minus g over b theta equals zero. And now this equation here is what we needed in order to identify our omega, which is our angular velocity. So that usually represents this value here. So we're gonna say that omega is equal to, and uh, this is omega squared, sorry. Omega squared is equal to this value in front of the theta, which is a minus g over b. And then finally we have omega is equal to the square root of a minus g over b. So this is our angular frequency. And this is our equation of motion for this system here, which is the pendulum swinging back and forth. Okay. And this is basically how we do the Lagrangian for this specific system. All right, guys.